Hello everyone, welcome back on the next video on motor control of the induction motor. In the previous video, we have controlled the motor using the sinusoidal pulse field modulation technique. In this video, we are going to control the motor with the help of space vector pulse field modulation technique. So here, while using the space vector pulse field modulation technique, we need a lesser distilling voltage as compared to the sinusoidal pulse width modulation techniques. Okay, so before going to the video, if you haven't subscribed the channel, please go and subscribe the channel for the latest update. So now we will start the video uh, on the MATLAB simulation of motor control using space vector PWM. So for this, we need a uh, two kind of circuit. One will be the power circuit and other one will be the control circuit so the power circuit will be in the real time like hardware inverter motor and the DC source and the control circuit will control the speed of the induction motor okay that will be using with the DSP and um, Arduino and any any other digital platform to control the induction motor okay so first we will prepare the power circuit later we will go for the complete control solutions for the motor control so what we need we need a dc voltage source and we need a igbt diode antipeller diode So we are using a three phase inverter, right? So we need a six IGBT with antipolar diode. Okay. So all are connected. So we are using three phase. So we need a six IGBT and all are connected. So one leg there will be two IGBT. So in this is the one leg, this is the two second leg, this is the third leg. So each leg there will be two switch will be present and uh, that will be connected with the DC voltage source. Now we are going to control the induction motor. So we need a, a synchronous machine. That is a synchronous machine that is the induction machine and we are going for the square can induction motor without changing any parameters okay so we are we want to measure the line current so we are using the current measurement So we'll connect all the current measurement with the series with the motor uh, phase. Okay, so now we will use the go to block. And it will be the IA line current for A phase. This is for line current for B phase and uh, this is for line current for the C phase okay so now we will use the constant block to give the torque for the motor so we are using here one newton meter newton into meter is the constant torque and this torque will vary depending upon your applications how much torque your motor needed now we will want to sense the speed of the motor so there will be inside a encoder will be there so but there is no provision so what we'll do we can select the bus selector so what bus selector will do if you double click on the bus so whatever 
parameters will be there inside the motor we can it will help us to sense all the parameters so we need a rotary speed okay so we'll go use the go to block so as you can see here here motor speed rotor speed will be in radian per second right that will be radian per second so we want to convert this rotor speed into this actual speed so what factor we need to multiply so we will see the formula omega that is the rotor speed in the radian per second equals to 2 into 5 into ns by 60 okay so this is the formula for calculating the uh, actual rotor speed so to get the n of s what factor multi we need to multiply we need to multiply by 30 by pi to obtain the ns if we know the omega okay so this is the basic formula to obtain the rotor speed in rpm from the rotor speed in radian per second okay so this will give us to complete control diagram for the motor control where dc source three phase inverter and the motor are connected and here we are sensing the rotor speed and that speed will be useful for speed control of the induction motor so now we will go for the control circuit in detail using the space vector modulation and v by of control we are using here so for the control circuit what we need we need a constant block we need a GAN we need a PI controller we need a sum We need a saturation, we need a division block and function block, max, max, max minimum and uh, repeating sequence the relational operator now this is our reference speed so we are denoting with we are giving the reference speed at thousand okay The reference speed minus actual speed. So actual speed will be this one, right? The speed we need to convert into the width factor we need to multiply 30 by pi to get into the rpm and it this error is feed into the pi controller and the output of this again feeding with the uh, motor reference motor actually speed and this will gives us okay this will be added with the motor reference speed a motor actually speed and this is feeded with the okay this will give us the speed uh, so this is converted again into the frequency so to get the frequency what we need we need to multiply with the 120 by 4 sorry it should be 4 by 120 because uh, there will be 120 f by p so p is the number of poles and f is the frequency so if we know the speed we can easily convert into the frequency right now we will use a saturation block so this is the frequency the frequency should not go beyond the 50 hertz and it should be zero lower level should be zero now this is multiplied with the to get the omega we need to multiply this frequency with 2 into pi 
so we will get the omega and if we know the omega and the rated omega we know right so we will get the ma so rated omega will be how much it will be 2 into pi into 50 and we will get the ma and this omega if we know and if we integrate it so what we will use we use the discrete time integrator okay if you use a discrete time integrator what we get we'll get the theta so when we got the ma and we got the theta so what can we do we can generate the sine wave right so we use the max where the first value will be the ma the first a first will be the ma and second will be the theta so we'll use the these three sine waves here we will use the sine of uh, u1 sine of u2 and u1 is the multiplication u1 into sine u2 right second will be u1 into sin u2 minus 2 into pi by 3 and the third one will be 4 pi by 3 so this is the what we are getting sin theta sin theta minus 2 pi by 3 sin theta minus 4 pi by 3 now we have to apply the space vector modulation here so for if the video will be so much lengthy so i am applying directly uh, the space vector modulation instead of explaining each and every part here so this block consists of the space vector modulation schemes so here i'll explain each and every part here so what we are doing here we are getting the what we are doing here we are getting the uh, signals sine theta sine theta minus 2 pi by 3 sine theta minus 4 pi by 3 and all three signals are doing the max we are finding the maximum of all three signal and minimum of all three signals and these three signals are subtracted okay our main aim is to put the offset value so when we are subtracting this one and we are subtracting all maximum minimum with the ts what and ts by 2 what and okay so max and minimum maximum minus minimum and uh, that is subtracted from the ts by 2 minus t minus minimum what will get will get a t offset and the t offset will be added in all three waveforms with minus 0.5 of the offset okay so all three waveforms we are added with the minus 0.5 uh, uh, offset so and that is further multiplied by 2 by root 3 to obtain the actual uh, carrier waveforms is we obtain in the sector wise representation of the space vector so this is the way okay so these here we are getting a b and c in such a way that t0 and t7 will be equals so what is the advantage of using this kind of pwm schemes is that less descending voltage is required to obtain the same amount of um, line to line voltage so if you are using the sine pwm we need a 0.5 vdc okay so for space vector pwm we need a uh, less uh, amount of voltages okay uh, okay so there will be uh, approximate 14 percent uh, less voltage we need as compared to the sine pwm techniques okay so these are further compared to obtain the pwm pulses for all three phases okay so what we'll do here okay so we will uh, use the go to block pin here and not get okay logical operator Same we'll copy for two and three.
एस वन एस टू एस थ्री ओके आई विल कम आफ्टर कनेक्शन ऑल द पिंस फ्रॉम टू दी स्विचेज एंड आई विल कम मेक इन द वीडियो ओके सो नाउ नाउ आई हैव कंप्लीटेड द सर्किट सो नाउ व्हाट वी नीड वी नीड अ पावर जी आई ब्लॉक एंड वी विल गो टू दी पैरामीटर कॉन्फ़िगरेशन फाइल मॉडल कॉन्फ़िगरेशन पैरामीटर्स सो हियर वी विल चेंज द फिक्स स्टेप साइज एंड एंड बॉक्सर की सैंपिंग एंड हियर वी विल कीप दी सैंपलिंग टाइम वाली की पावर माइनस फाइव एंड वी विल अप्लाई एंड वी विल मेक इट ओके ओके सो नेक्स्ट हियर वी नीड टू कीप द पीआई पैरामीटर्स राइट सो pi parameters we are going for the discrete domain and we are using the pi controller and here we are using 1 and 10 as a pi parameters okay so now we will run the okay so one more thing what we need to keep the dc link voltage here so we have seen like uh, in space factor pwm we need a, a line to line voltage will be that will be 0.5 ma into vdc Right for the space factor modulation, we need a line-to-line -line voltage will be 0.57 ma into VDC. So based upon these calculations, uh, if you are using the space sinusoidal pulse wave modulation, we need a uh, 650 DC link voltage, and if you are using the space factor modulation, we need a 572 as a DC link voltage. So here, why we are keeping the 572 as a DC link voltage? Okay, so now we run it. and we'll see what is the response now we will uh, see the waveforms of the current also the ia this will be the ib and this will be the ic Okay, so now we will run it and we will see how it responds, right? So initially we have mentioned the speed at fourteen hundred RPM, and we will see the response. So motor maintained the speed as fourteen hundred RPM, as you can see here. So now what we will do? We will change the speed of the motor. uh from 1400 to uh 1000 rpm and we will see the response of the motor as you can see here motor is uh shifted from 1400 to 1000 rpm with the response is a under under dam response so now we'll see the we further reduce the motor speed will make a motor speed is 600 and we will see the whether it is able to track the 600 also not so still it is able to track the 600 uh, rpm now we will suddenly shift from 600 to 1400 and we will see whether motor speed is achieved 1400 or not yeah it achieved 1400 as you can see here now if you look at the current of the motor you can see here this is the three phase current of the motor and the starting condition of motor you can see here so this is the three phase current of the motor okay so hmm, like this we can easily control the speed of the induction motor either it's for sinusoidal pulse wave modulation or space factor pulse wave modulation and the advantage of the space factor pulse wave modulation is that we require the less amount of voltage as we kept 650 volts for the particular motor and uh, here we kept 576 uh, for the same motor uh, and we obtained the same speed uh, characteristics as we obtained from the sinusoidal pulse wave modulation schemes okay 
so if you haven't subscribed my channel please go and subscribe the channel for the latest update and share this video so many people can benefit and many people can learn from these videos thank you thank you very much